Welcome to Croft for the last round of the championship and what a season. Dan Rook is the champ, but as you'll see, there's no holds barred in the battle for second. This is round eight and Liam Durant joins the fray again. Dan Rook has honour at stake, but it was the last round, Pembrey, where the rookie sealed the title. Oh, road three. Six laps in prospect, engine notes rise. We're racing on board with Ollie O'Donovan. Great start, look, from the third row, threading his way through the traffic. Who jokers? Let's see. Dan Rook does bring brakes very, very late, scrabbles out wide and loses places. With Ollie O'Donovan and Dan Rook, he's up ahead of Proctor. We've had that change between the two, but Proctor fights back up the inside. There's contact. Rook gets turned sideways. He hangs on to it and Proctor loses a place to near neighbour Dave Bellamy who gets through on the inside line as well there. But Dan Rook now doing his best to bring down the gap to the leader. Ollie O'Donovan it is, remember he started on that third and final row of the grid. He leads the way and he's trying to build as big a margin as he can over Dan Rook. Everybody is going to do enough here to win the championship. There's Bellamy having a go at Steve Harris. They work their way now through on the curve. And Ollie O'Donovan this time around turns his way through that joker lap. This is Bellaby on the inside of Harris and through he goes. Job done. Three has the record at the moment and Dan Rook there. The teenage tear away on the back of double OD. Ollie O'Donovan nose to tail. They run across the loose once again. O'Donovan is sideways, but there's no opportunity there on the inside for Rook. And he has to fall a little bit back so you can see where he's going. The props is in strife again. He runs wide. He's got damage at the front. Flicks the car through the hairpin. And now, side by side they run, Dan Rook into the lead of the race, they make contact, O'Donovan stands his ground and still leads the race, wow! But they've only got a couple of corners to go, the chequered flag is at the ready, let's see, it's going to be nose to tail through Honda Curve, Dan Rook goes to the outside line now as they power their way up towards the chequered flag, Ollie O'Donovan just had his nose ahead when they came across the line, but it was very, very close indeed. Ollie O'Donovan, the winner, and we're talking here thousands of a second ahead of Dan Rook. Third goes the way of Dave Bellamy, Steve Harris fourth, Steve Hill fifth, and Julian Godfrey sixth. And that is enough to give the championship to Dan Rook. He becomes the youngest ever British Rallycross champion. The sun is trying to break through as we look at Q1 with our commentator, David Addison. First round of qualifying races already taking place here at Croft. We've got the second race in a moment. First, let's just catch up with what happened in the opener. Steve Hill made a pretty slow start, but a good getaway. Put Pat Duran into the race lead with Kevin Proctor clanging into the side of Andy Grant as they work their way through Clairvaux for the first time. Once through, Proctor was in hot pursuit of Duran. He knocked one of the tyre stacks flying and got the inside line through Hawthorne. That, in turn, put him into the race lead. And from there, local man Proctor wasn't to be denied. Duran ran second ahead of Andy Grant with Steve Hill recovering from that pop start, closing back in in fourth. Behind them, Tony Bardi driving Ollie O'Donovan's Ford Focus. And up front, the battle between Grant and Duran came to an end as the Citroen of Pat Duran slowed and pulled to the infield. In the background, Mad Mark Watson having all sorts of dramas in the Citroen, including a spin down at the hairpin. Steve Hill was the next driver to come up and take the challenge to Andy Grant. The two of them ran side by side across the loose. Hill on the outside line through Samson Curve and then made the move at the hairpin. Contact was made, both scrabbled wide. Behind them, Dave Bellaby had a spin. Grant hung on to second place, Hill right up behind him as at the head of the field, Kevin Proctor was on target to score a heat win. It was still a very slippery circuit, but Proctor was not to be denied as he came through victorious, with second place going the way of Grant, Steve Hill coming through for third. The second race underway here at Croft in the supercar class and a great start made by Dan Rook, this year's champion from the outside of the front row as they blast down towards Clairvaux for the first time. Julian Godfrey has a look at the inside, Rook sideways wide through the gravel and back out the other side. He leads the way as they work their way then up towards the chicane. Dan Rook, this year's champion, ahead of outgoing champion Julian Godfrey. The two of them nose to tail through the chicane. 
Dan Rook is getting away. Godfrey has now got Oli O'Donovan in his Fiesta tucked up behind him. O'Donovan a little bit sideways. Running fourth, Liam Duran. Godfrey slows on the back straight. Double OD goes past him. Duran goes past him as well. Julian Godfrey falls back down into fourth place. Duran right on the tail of O'Donovan now. Dan Rook, this year's champion, is getting away, but the battle is on for second, third and fourth here. Through that little shuttle they come. James Grint rather distant at the back of the pack in the Albertech Peugeot. And Liam Duran, former Grand Prix winner, regular in the world, running cross championship, is right on the back of O'Donovan now. Dan Rook is getting away. Now, the time he's got to try to beat is Kevin Proctor's 3.15.861. Is he going to be able to do it? Dan Rook makes his way up towards the line, and he does go quicker. Dan Rook is a race winner and a heat winner, but he has been given a 10-second penalty for exceeding track limits, and that means Kevin Proctor wins Q1 ahead of Ollie O'Donovan and Liam Duran. Dan Rook dropping down the order. Pat Duran and Mad Mark not even getting to the finish of the first qualifying races. Q1 then done and dusted for the supercars. So let's see the finals in the best of the rest, part one. Well, all the way up from the south coast, Chichester man Chrissy Palmer was really someone that you would never bet on to be beaten. In the celebrity car for this race at Croft was the British F4 race winner, Jamie Caroline. He got a great start and led, and that really must have shot the somewhat dominant Palmer. The single seater man dropped back and struggled really keep on top of things after that. Palmer, not surprisingly, was dominant once again and kept ahead. Stephen Jones from Havant, just along the coast from Chichester, of course, and Jake Harris finished the season tied on points for second in the standings. But Jones takes the place on a result countback. Langley from Liverpool finished second and Caroline completed the podium. But Palmer took his eighth win from eight. That really is a true clean sweep of victories this year. In the Super 1600s, we had a newcomer. He came, he saw, and he absolutely conquered and nailed it. Close racing as always, as uh, you'd expect with this category. And at the final, well, the round was still a title to be settled. And Paul Coney, who had a really good season in the Vauxhall Corsa VXR, was looking ideally for victory. But it was actually the new boy on the block, Michael Burke, that passed Coney in the second corner of the Super 1600 final. And then he went on to win his first event of the season. Well, Coney, of course, could afford to let him go. His target was the title-chasing Tristan Ovenden, who came up from his uh, hometown Canterbury. And in the end, Coney claimed the title ahead of Ovenden, who finished fourth at Croft. And the outgoing champion, incidentally, Craig Lomax, was third. Well, in the BMW Mini Final, the Hudson brothers, Kiefer and Chris, kept up the pressure early on. Their target was Martin Hawkes. He comes from Stockton on Tee, so Croft for him is very much a local home ground. And with supporters there as well cheering him on, Hawks drove superbly to score a maiden victory in the series. Well, not such a good day for first Kiefer Hudson, who had a spin, and he was narrowly missed in it as well. And then as the race progressed, Chris Hudson just struggled a little bit and lost out. Eventually, he joined his brother as a retirement. It was Bradley Durden that took up the cudgels of pressurising the leader Hawks and in the end finished second. David Bell was third, uh, but the championship title went to Chris Hudson. Well, the MSA Super National is always entertaining, isn't it? And Croft was yet another spectacle. Uh, pouring into the first corner. No Paige Bellaby, unfortunately, she retired in the semis. But that front scrap saw Joe Cunningham uh, in the battle there. Steve Cousins led. But Tony Lynch, who is no stranger to silverware, well, he notched up yet another title. But this one, the MSA Super National Championship, is for him by far and away his biggest 
surprise yet. Now Cousins came oh so close to a really massive shunt. He went off, but how he avoided the barriers, whew, no one will know. Guy Corner from North Allerton climbed to second in the final to finish second to Lynch in the championship. And Alan Tapscott completed the podium. Back with the supercars action as Q2 gets underway. Once again, our man on the mic, David Addison. It was an all action Q1 here at Croft. Q2 for the supercars underway. James Grint makes a good start from the outside of the front row, but it's Tony Bardi on the inside. Dave Bellaby in the middle. Three into one, will not go. Who's going to come off worse? It's Bardi and Grint who both go wide through the gravel, and Dave Bellaby in the Fiesta comes out in the lead. Bellaby is one of the three drivers fighting for second place in the championship, the others being Ollie O'Donovan and Julian Godfrey. So Bellaby has to get through into the finals and he's got to get as far up the order on the grid as he can, ideally, on the front row. And he's going the right way about it here. So Bellaby leads. Tony Bardi, who's not done very much racing in the last 12 months or so, proving he's not race rusty. He is second, Grint third, Pat Duran fourth, Steve Harris fifth. Bellaby doing his best here to get away from the rest of them as they work their way through the chicane and Grint has a huge slide way out into the weeds he goes, fishtails back towards the circuit. James Grint has always been spectacular this year. It's great to have him in the supercar class of the MSA British Rallycross Championship. Long may he stay. Bardi up the inside of Bellaby, Fiesta versus Focus. The Fiesta just hangs onto the place. Dave Bellamy, whose two daughters are racing here as well this weekend, hangs on to the advantage. Mad Mark in trouble again, this time a suspension breakage, front left corner. Bellamy is getting away from Bardi now as they work their way through the hairpin. Back onto the power, heading up towards the timing line. Can Dave Bellamy take the fastest time in this second qualifying round? Let's see as Steve Harris goes wide in the Citroen DS3. Bellaby is now gapping Bardi, no question about it. The Fiesta pulling clear of the focus as they work their way along the back straight once again. Tony Bardi, who prepares this car, owned by Ollie O'Donovan. They're looking for a customer for it, but rather than having it sitting in the garage, Tony Bardi brings it out and adds to this very competitive supercar class this weekend. It's going to be a win for Dave Bellaby. 3 minutes 6.792 becomes the target time in this second round of races. Tony Bardi chasing him home. Race 2 underway. This is going to be Dan Rook versus Ollie O'Donovan versus Liam Duran versus Kevin Proctor versus Steve Hill versus Andy Grant. It's a real clash of the Titans and Rook leads the way. Proctor way off the road, straight through the gravel. He was fourth on the way in. He's almost leading coming out of the corner. Rook versus Liam Duran, first and second. Proctor slots in behind them, third. That was a big, big moment for him, but he actually made it work to his advantage. Local man Kevin Proctor then, third, as they work their way across the loose section of the circuit. Proctor won here at the start of the season, denying Dan Rook an opportunity to score a first-time supercar win, but since then it's been a really difficult year for Proctor. Is he going to find a way past Duran as they work their way out of the hairpin? Rook leads the way. Liam Duran second, damage on the back of the car, third is Kevin Proctor and a trim trailing. Liam Duran, former Grand Prix winner, works his way down now towards Clairvaux Corner. Dan Rook, remember, penalised in the first round of races for exceeding track limits. That meant that he fell down the classification and he's got to do the hard work all over again here. There, going through, Liam Duran under attack still, very much of course, from Kevin Proctor. Duran onto the loose. Proctor, local man, knows this place like the back of his hand. He's rallied across here successfully, takes part in single venue rallies. And the local businessman right onto the back of Duran. They're catching Dan Rook a little bit as they work their way past the tyre stack on the inside of the hairpin. As far as Rook is concerned, though, it looks as though this is going to be a race win, but will it be in a time quicker than that of Dave Bellamy in the first race? Proctor, two sideways, coming out of Hawthorne into the chicane, losing touch with Liam Duran now. Duran, if anything, going after his teammate now, the gap coming down between Rook and Duran Jr. 
Dan Rook, this year's British champion, leads the way into the hairpin. Liam Duran has caught right up onto the back of him, but it is going to be a win, seemingly, for Dan Rook, who blasts his way over the timing line. Liam Duran is going to be second. Kevin Proctor will take third. And Dan Rook's winning time is quicker than that of Dave Bellaby. So that means he goes fastest in the second round of qualifying races. Action coming thick and fast at Croft. Dan Rook fastest in Q2 ahead of Liam Duran and Dave Bellamy. Ollie O'Donovan fourth, Tony Barney fifth and Steve Hill sixth. Julian Godfrey not getting to the start of his race this time around. Matt Mark not finishing. First race in Q3 underway. Good start by Grant, good start by Pat Duran. At the back of this field, you've got Julian Godfrey worth watching because he missed his second race with gearbox bearings problems. He needs a good result out of this, as also does Mad Mark at the back in the Citroen, who's had a really torrid day here in his home circuit. The local hotelier has had all sorts of problems, but he needs a good result out of this, and he's going the right way about it. Mad Mark on the back of Steve Harris, Julian Godfrey on the back of James Grint. Pat Duran completely sideways, leads the way. Andy Grant is behind him. James Grint third and Godfrey already up into fourth place. Mad Mark at the rear of the field in the ex Laurent Terratin Citroen trying to work his way now up the order as Pat Duran leads the way onto the tarmac and Grint and Grant are together. Grant is second, Grint third in the spectacular Peugeot. It's barely ever in a straight line, that car. James Grint, very flamboyant, good car control. Long may it continue. He's been a real asset to the championship. Missed Pembray last time out because he was getting over an engine drama and also saving a bit of budget to go do the Clio Cup at Brands Hatch at the touring car meeting. He got roughed up there as well. Sideways, grid down to the hairpin. Julian Godfrey up the inside of him for third. And Godfrey on the power goes right round the outside of Andy Grant as well for second place now. Two places gained in one fell swoop. Great stuff. Godfrey goes second. Grant down to third. Grint down to fourth. Now can Godfrey do anything about the leader, Pat Duran? Andy Grant on the limit as the Will Gollum built Ford Focus pendulums its way around Hawthorne. But Julian Godfrey now up into second place, trying to break away. Pat Duran in the Citroen C4 leading the pack. Julian Godfrey's Fiesta second, the focus of Andy Grant third and James Grint in the Albatech Peugeot 208 again, tries the outside line, completely sideways, runs out of road. Andy Grant goes back ahead of him and retakes third place, but Grint never gives up. And look, Grant goes wide, Grint tries to level with him. Back to the tarmac they come. Lots of dust now hanging in the air. We've had some rain this morning, all sorts of weather being thrown at the drivers today. Now, though, the track is drier than it has been, and it's quicker than it has been. James Grint again tries the outside line. Again, it comes to naught for him. It's going to be a win, seemingly, for Pat Duran. Julian Godfrey right up with him as we get to the chequered flag. The Citroen takes honours. The final heat is about to get underway as they blast away from the line. Pat Durand did a 3 minutes 1.8 in his earlier race and Kevin Proctor leads on the charge down towards Clairvaux. Dave Bellaby is going to be second, Liam Durand third. Proctor keeps it on the tarmac. This time he got a 10 second penalty in Q2 for exceeding track limits because he ran so wide at Clairvaux and made the move work for him. Gained places rather than being delayed by it. So he got a penalty. Now let's see what he can do in this last qualifying race. Liam Duran completely sideways as he attacks Dave Bellaby. Both run off the road. Ollie O'Donovan goes ahead of Bellaby. Tony Bardi is in the mix as well and he gets up the inside and gain a place. Fantastic action. Cars sideways, dust hanging in the air as they blast their way back onto tarmac. Proctor leads. Liam Duran second. Dave Bellaby is third and Liam Duran completely sideways at Clairvaux now. Goes very wide, does Liam Durant. That's the kind of move that's been attracting penalties for track limit abuse earlier on in the day. He's got Dave Bellamy tucked up behind him as they work their way through the chicane. Durant sideways down at the hairpin. Can Bellamy get up alongside? They touch. Liam Durant in the Citroen drops a place, slides back behind Bellamy. The fiesta of the local man works its way through into second place. So Proctor leads Bellaby, the brothers-in-law, first and now third because Duran goes up the inside, goes wide, goes off, back on again, hangs on to second place and he's still sideways. Look at that. Bellaby goes through. He retakes second place 
and Dave Bellaby, he's going to chase home his brother-in-law, Kevin Proctor. It's a good race for the family. Liam Duran is going to be third on the road, but don't be surprised if he gets a track limit penalty for that. Kevin Proctor, fastest at the end of Q3, ahead of Dave Bellaby, but Liam Duran does indeed get a 10 second penalty for track limit abuse, and it means that he falls down the order. 10th at the end of that round, with Dan Rook missing out altogether with engine problems. Well, let's take a pause from the supercars. Plenty more to come from them with the semis and final. Let's get back to the best of the rest. Now, the MSA juniors cut their teeth in rallycross in this category, so it's not surprisingly there are a few rookie errors. Uh, Middleton was a spinner here, whereas Jones, well, seemingly got away with it. Now, Tom Llewellyn, son of the former British rally champion Di Llewellyn, maintained his 100% winning record in the championship. Four starts in 2016 at Croft Circuit, but it was Sam Jones uh, who won the title, having led the points race for much of the year, and Tom Constantine finished in second place, missing out on the title by just two points. It was Michael Lebetz who won the final round of the Hot Hatch Rallycross Championship. He was ahead of Graham Rumsey, the man from Kent, and also Mark Henry. But Robert Potira, who came up from Hounslow near Heathrow, well, sadly for him, Croft was not a great weekend. He retired during the final. But then, to be fair, you could argue, what did he care? The category title was for him in the bag. He is the champion this year in the Hot Hatch Rallycross Championship. Well, Nathan Heathcote secured the Swift Sport Rallycross Championship title, and he did it in the best possible way. It was a really closely contested final. The season spoils though and the championship crown went to Nathan Heathcote. Uh, Jack Brown led until the uh, penultimate lap but Heathcote took the lead exiting the circuit's hairpin and Martin Daliel uh, climbed to second in the encounter while uh, the title challenger Simon Ovenden uh, finished third at Croft and second in the points. Brown's third, fourth place was enough to move into third overall and Luke Woodham ran at the front of the field in the opening corners, but he finished sixth behind the former junior champion, Aidan Hills. There is supercar action to come, so sit back, Sadly, no sign of Dan Rook, though he didn't make the semi-finals. An engine problem saw him retire. The first of the semi-finals about to get underway here. Ollie O'Donovan is the man starting on pole position. Dave Bellamy and Tony Bardi with him at the front of the grid. Steve Hill and James Grint on row two. And Pat Duran, former British champion, of course, is going to start at the back of the grid. It's the top four that go through into the final. We're racing, good start by Bellaby. He's flanked by the Oli O'Donovan cars of Double OD himself and Tony Bardi. Pat Duran all over the grass on the way down towards Clairvaux for the first time. Who is it going to be that leads? It's O'Donovan. Bellaby second, but a bit wide. And Tony Bardi tries to get up the inside of him. Double OD leads the way. Bellaby still trying desperately to unsettle him. Fiestas first and second. As the London-based Irishman, Oli O'Donovan, leads sideways onto the dirt, kicks up the muck into the face of Dave Bellaby. Tony Bardi up alongside. Has he got second? Yes, he has. What's happened to Bellaby? Hill is third, and Bellaby's had a moment at the chicane. Look, he's fallen back into fourth place as Duran runs off the road. It's starting to get a bit wet once more at Croft. More and more spots of rain falling as O'Donovan leads Bardi. Steve Hill in the Mitsubishi up to third. And so Dave Bellamy, who needs to get into the final to keep alive his hopes of being second in the championship. He's slipping down the order, not gaining places. As they turn their way around Hawthorne now, up towards the chicane. Tony Bardi keeping Steve Hill behind him. But Ollie O'Donovan is set now, I think, to make good his escape. Bardi in the focus versus Hill in the Mitsubishi. A great return to Rallycross for Tony Bardi. 
He has been in the sport for decades, both as a racer and a preparer. He had a spell in the late 80s in the Metro Turbo Challenge. And Dave Bellaby still pushing on, loses it. Coming out of Samson Curve, round he goes. A big spin for him, and that puts him sixth and last. That looks like his hopes of being in the final are long gone. He does rejoin, but he's a distant last. Local man Dave Bellaby then spins himself out of contention. O'Donovan leads the way as Steve Hill in the Mitsubishi. Much improved car over the course of the year is staying with Bardi for second place now. From Hawthorne into the chicane, turns the race leader, Oli O'Donovan, and he blasts his way now onto that back straight. There is Bellaby. He's still playing catch up. Now, OK, it could be that somebody ahead has a problem, but it's a very tall order for him now to get into the top four. James Grint still trying to find a way past Steve Hill as they work their way out of Samson Curve down to the hairpin. Bardi goes wide, though, so Hill and Grint and Pat Duran all close up to him. Umbrellas up in the crowd. Look as the wipers are on the cars. It is getting wet. It's getting slippery again here at Croft. Onto the tarmac. Grint challenging Hill. This is for third place. James goes wide, rattles over the curb, back onto the circuit. Now looks for the inside line. The car's understeering, oversteering. The driver's constantly having to work away behind the wheel. Through the chicane, onto the back straight. It's loose, it's fast. Meantime, it is a 1-2 for the Ollie O'Donovan fleet of cars because Double OD himself leads Tony Bardi in second place and then nose to tail as Steve Hill goes wide. James Grint tries to get up the inside of him, but he ends up running out wide and Pat Duran goes past him. Grint losing a place rather than gaining. And now Duran is on a mission. In fact, Grint's got a problem. He's parked it in the background. Grint is out. Bellaby gains one place. He needs one more to qualify, though, for the final. Hill's off the road and he hits Duran. Big impact. Both spin. Pat Duran harpooned. Let's have a look at it. There is Hill off the road, seemingly shortcutting Hawthorne, and he goes straight into the side of Pat Duran. On board with Hill. Ah, this is the reason why he had a big slide coming out of Clairvaux. That puts him on that shortcut. And there's nothing from that line he can do apart from clattering into the side of Duran. So who survived out of all of that is the next question. Because you've now got O'Donovan leading Bardi. They are going to qualify. But have a look in the background. Dave Bellaby is running in third place. With the Harry Carry committed up at Hawthorne. Suddenly... What was looking a very unprepossessing sixth is third, and he's going to be through to the final. Amazing. O'Donovan leads the way, Bardi second, and Bellaby now will qualify for the final. He runs third, and Pat Duran has got going again, so he's fourth. Those are the qualifiers. But Oli O'Donovan here is on target for a semi final win. He's been driving the Fiesta in Europe this year, the Focus in the UK, but it shows just how quick a car this Ford Fiesta is. He's looked absolutely dynamite straight out of the blocks here. Through the hairpin he comes. He's on his own. He's got Bardi shadowing him, but not really attacking him, as up towards the line comes Ollie O'Donovan. And it looks as though a semi-final one win is going to go his way. Second goes the way of Tony Bardi. Third, Dave Bellaby. Fourth, Pat Duran. They make it through into the final. Steve Hill and James Grint, the non-qualifiers after an all-action first semi-final. Oli O'Donovan's Ford Fiesta then goes through as the winner of semi-final one here at Croft. Semi-final two is about to get underway. Liam Duran should have been on the front row. He has elected to start at the back. We understand he's got a drive shaft problem, so it's a two-wheel drive only car. He's just got to try and get through this race. He might be able to qualify for the final, but even if he does with two-wheel drive, it's going to be a tall order to improve from there. Lights go out. Kevin Proctor blasts away. He's going to get the jump on Andy Grant, and Julian Godfrey goes with him on the way down to Clairvaux. Fiesta first and second, Focus third as they work their way around Clairvaux then now with Proctor leading the way, Godfrey running second and third is Grant, fourth behind them as they battle their way up towards the loose, you can see the Citroen. Steve Harris then looking for a decent result out of this as Julian Godfrey works his way across the loose section of the circuit. Godfrey on the back of Proctor. Such an up-and-down season for both of them, really. They come with great track records in Rallycross, but neither have had that good a year. Godfrey tries to get up the inside of Proctor. Can't quite do it. Harris, in the meantime, looking for a way past Grant for third place. 
Proctor dancing his way across the loose towards Tarbac, but he's not shaking off Julian Godfrey here. The two Ford Fiestas running together. The ex NASA Aratea rally car in the hands of Kevin Proctor leading the way. And Julian Godfrey right up behind Proctor, who understeers, then oversteers his way through Hawthorne. Godfrey on the tail of him. Proctor, though, now sets the car up for the exit of the chicane. And Julian Godfrey is right there looking to attack. In comes the power. Two litre turbocharged engines. They dance their way across the loose. Liam Duran's two wheel drive Citroën playing catch up at the back of the pack as Godfrey tries to usurp Proctor from the lead. There's half a gap on the inside, but he just can't quite take it. Working their way now once more across the loose section of the circuit. And the race leader remains Kevin Proctor. Now, from Godfrey's point of view, does he need to attack or just stay in the top four and make sure he gets through to the final? Ideally, he would like to be ahead of Proctor and get himself as far up the grid as he could do for the final itself. There's no Dan Rook, of course, in the semi-finals because the engine dramas that kept him out of Q3 keep him out of this as well, so he won't make it through into the final. It leaves the way clear for a different winner. And here you've got two drivers that have both scored a victory this season. Proctor won here earlier on in the year. It's his home circuit, and he'd desperately like to round out the season with another win. Godfrey. Still with him, but the gap widening just a touch as Liam Duran battles on behind. For third, it's still Andy Grant versus Steve Harris. Both of those should make it through. Andy Grant's Ford Focus, it's not in the first flush of youth, but it still goes very well. The garage owner at the helm. Steve Harris tucked up behind him as there. You can see Kevin Proctor fishtailing his way out of the chicane and onto the loose once more. Julian Godfrey not being able to find a way past him, but equally, he's not dropping away too much. He's staying there, ready to pounce if Proctor just goes a little bit wide into a corner, if he struggles to get down the power in time. But there, look at the drive out of the hairpin. There's a little bit of hard standing as well to help acceleration. Proctor leading the way. Liam Duran, good to have him back in the British Championship. It's a shame that the car has this problem and we're not seeing the best of him. He's also here not just for British Championship success, but tomorrow here at Croft is the British Rallycross Grand Prix, and that is one they all want to win. It's two days of action for the fans here. Semi-final two, however, being led by Proctor. For third, Andy Grant is still ahead of Steve Harris. Wisps of smoke coming out of the back of the Citroen, then the black Citroen in fourth place, but it looks like Proctor has done enough, and Julian Godfrey's car getting a bit smoky as well now. Proctor drifts into the hairpin. That helps with the line to power out the other side. And look, he does gap Godfrey by about three lengths or so now. Over the timing line, through that shuttle, and then back onto the tarmac they come. Look at Godfrey's car. Look at the back of it. The smoke is getting worse. It's not slowing him, looking at the lap times. But I am getting a little bit concerned about the longevity of the second-placed Ford Fiesta. Godfrey goes through Hawthorne and now into the chicane. That takes you onto the back straight, onto the loose. Six laps for the semi-finals, so a bit more strain on the cars if they have got problems. Steve Harris, meantime, is still glued to the back of Andy Grant. Now there is Godfrey working his way round the hairpin, onto the power. They step down off that bit of hard standing, across the loose once again. And Kevin Proctor still looking as though the semi-final win is going to go his way. Now there is Duran fifth. He won't qualify unless somebody has a drama up the road. And Steve Harris is on the verge of one because he goes way, way deep into the corner. Loses all the time he'd made up against Andy Grant. He drops back into fourth place. He'll still qualify, but distant fourth in the end. Kevin Proctor wins semi-final two. Julian Godfrey second, Andy Grant third, and Steve Harris fourth. They join the other four drivers in the final. It is going to be an all-action way to round out the year. It was the best eight here at Croft will now slug it out in the final. And that race is coming up after the break. Well, it's come down to the last final of the last round, and we're going to see Pat Duran in the Citroen. Andy Grant's known as Golly, apparently. Kevin Proctor may drive a coach by day, but he rally crosses a Fiesta. And local man Dave Bellaby, and there Julian Godfrey. We'll also see Tony Bardi and Ollie O'Donovan. The final here at Croft coming up in a moment, but we've had red flags aplenty. Let's just catch up with 
what has been happening thus far. This was the first attempt to run the race. On board with Kevin Proctor, all sorts of drama down at the first corner, including Proctor and his brother-in-law, Dave Bellaby, getting it together. Now, what that did, apart from damage Bellaby's car, it brought a tyre stack into the middle of the road. We'll come to that in a moment. Bellaby, first of all, a punctured tyre. He was out of the race and he toured round into retirement. Oli O'Donovan was the leader. He was the man then blasting his way down through Samson Curve ahead of Julian Godfrey. The damaged car of Kevin Proctor third. Godfrey then got all sideways down at the hairpin. Proctor got up the inside and there was more contact as the two Fiestas clattered off one another. That delayed Proctor. Tony Bardi got past him. The cars worked their way off the loose, onto the tarmac, into Clairvaux. Watch Bardi look out for a tyre stack that's been dragged into the road and he knows nothing about. Bang! Headbutts it, knocks it flying. And at that point, the clerk of the course decided to stop the race. The red flags wave. Some saw them, some didn't. Kevin Proctor was a retirement, though, with a combination of the damage from the two incidents. And eventually, everybody was brought under control. Now, O'Donovan had a power steering problem, so he couldn't take part in the restart, nor able to run was Bardi after his damage and then Duran came across the road at the second time of asking took Steve Harris with him Duran knocked tyres everywhere and ended up in the gravel have another look he lost it came across the front of Grant took Harris for a spin and Duran by this stage has got everything locked up he's on the friction free grass Julian Godfrey escapes Duran brings tyres onto the road Grant goes through Duran sits in the gravel bed so Julian Godfrey was the race leader, pretty much on his own because he was somewhat quicker than Andy Grant. But the concern was Duran's car in the gravel at the first corner. It was sitting on the edge of the road. And as the clerk of the course also had tyre stacks floating around the place to worry about, in the end, there wasn't really any option. And so, as a sideways Godfrey also nearly ran out of road down at the hairpin, the race officials reached for the red flags once again because Pat Duran was going absolutely nowhere and you could see how vulnerable a position that car was in. And so out came the red flags and everybody was forced to slow down. So the grid for our third effort to run the final is going to be based on those that were running at the second red flag at the front of the grid and anybody else behind them. So Godfrey starts on pole from Andy Grant and Steve Harris. Second row, Kevin Proctor's rebuilt car. Ollie O'Donovan alongside, but he's got no power steering. Pat Duran, then Dave Bellaby and then Tony Bardi with running repairs effected are on the back row of the grid. The fans here have had a long wait for the final of this year's MSA British Rallycross Championship. Proctor makes a dreadful start on board with Dave Bellaby on the run down towards Clairvaux. Julian Godfrey leads the way. There's Godfrey hard at work as people clatter off the side of him and Ollie O'Donovan picks up the race lead. O'Donovan locks up heading into Hawthorne but he's clear up front. Godfrey is second and a good start here in fact by Steve Harris putting him up into third place. So double OD it is, Ollie O'Donovan who leads the way. Now, much as there is a race going on here, there's also the battle to be second in the championship. It's between O'Donovan and Godfrey and Bellaby. You've got drop scores to factor into it. And at the moment, Ollie O'Donovan is in the box seat, not just to win this last round of the championship, but to be the series runner-up to Dan Rook as well. Here they come across the loose and back to tarmac. Six laps for the final of the MSA British Rallycross Championship with Odyssey Battery. Kevin Proctor is at the back of the pack after that bad start and it doesn't look as though he's making much progress in all of this. Tony Bardi, whose car was repaired after headbutting that tyre stack, he too is in a big hurry going after Dave Bellaby. There is Bellaby who needs more places out of this. He's on the loose section of the circuit as Godfrey comes up to challenge for the race lead. Bellaby meantime rattles into the side of Steve Harris which forces him wide. Steve Harris in the black Citroen, though, keeps his foot nailed to the boards and comes up alongside Godfrey on board with Bellaby now. First gear out of the hairpin, grabs second, but he's not up alongside. If anything, he's under attack. Tony Bardi right with him as O'Donovan still leads the way. And Steve Harris having his best showing of the season, but he slows and Bellaby goes through on the inside. And Harris and Bardi make contact and Bardi loses it. Off he goes. All the way across the infield from another angle. You see the contact. They both get sideways. And Bardi, amazingly, has hung on to that. It wasn't quite a spin. 
Here it is from the outside again. Up the inside he goes of Harris. Steve is sideways. Tony Bardi completely crossed up. Heads for all the undergrowth. And in the end, the lawnmower that he's now at the wheel of gets back towards the tarmac. It wasn't a spin, it was an almighty lose, but he just about saved it. He will drop him down the order. There is Pat Duran in the meantime, still pressing on in his Citroen as he works his way to the loose. But up front, who is going to be the race winner? It is a real grudge match now between O'Donovan and Godfrey. At stake is a race win and also to be second in the championship. Dave Bellaby is the man who runs third as they turn their way out of the hairpin. Look at the gap, it widens now. Bardi flicks the focus out of the hairpin. Is he able to gain any more ground before the end of the race? Kevin Proctor has just gained a spot against him, so Bardi is fading, and Proctor, although hobbled, is starting to work his way up the order. Oli O'Donovan leading the way, but have a look behind him. It is all concertinering up now. This is going to be a great way to end the season. Godfrey just ahead of Bellamy, and here comes Duran. The Citroen charges past Dave Bellamy. Has he got a problem? He's fading. Up to third comes Duran. Not only that, but first, second, third and fourth are all very close indeed at the hairpin. Ollie O'Donovan, massively experienced driver, former British champion, leads the way. Do we lose Kevin Proctor? Well, he's behind Andy Grant and clearly all is not well for Kev the Rev. But up front, Ollie O'Donovan leads the way. Is it going to be a win for him? He won last time out at Pembroke. Can he do two on the bounce and also in two different cars? Ford Focus took him to honours in South Wales. Ford Fiesta here in North Yorkshire. Godfrey hanging on to second, but with every passing lap, Pat Duran becomes even quicker. He's really taking the battle to Godfrey here. Duran, whose involvement in Rallycross started in the halcyon days of Group B cars back in the mid to late 80s. Here he is sideways, though, right on the tail of Godfrey. The three leaders work their way around the hairpin. They're going to start the last lap this time around as Proctor in the meantime is under attack from Barney in the green and white and yellow focus. They're side by side. And Proctor does lose out. Bardi goes past him. Bardi then goes wide. And they're still side by side as Randy Grant comes out to have a go at Bellaby. Proctor asserts himself and stays ahead of Bardi. For the last time, though, Oli O'Donovan works his way around Hawthorne's. Julian Godfrey is going to be second in the race. But Double OD, with some pretty crude maths here, is going to be able to take the runners up spot in the championship. It has been a great season in the MSA British Rallycross Championship, no question about it. We've had a new prodigious talent in Dan Rook discovered. We've had great racing and a superb entry of supercars year long. Ollie O'Donovan, though, blasts his way up towards the line and wins the final here at Croft. Second is Julian Godfrey. Third is Pat Duran. Ollie O'Donovan takes a second win of the year in another all-action race, and it was worth the wait. O'Donovan the winner, Godfrey second to round third ahead of Bellamy, Proctor and Tony Bardi to round out the top six. Andy Grant coming home seventh and Steve Harris in the end eighth. In the championship, Dan Rook confirmed as the title winner. Ollie O'Donovan second and Julian Godfrey third ahead of Dave Bellamy fourth and Kevin Proctor and Steve Hill. Some great racing this weekend and tomorrow here at Croft is the British Rallycross Grand Prix and here to take part in that, Liam Duran. Welcome back to British Rallycross. How does it shape up against, first of all, the World Championship and indeed how British Rallycross used to be? Yeah, I mean, I've, I obviously started in British Rallycross um, and a, a lot of years ago now, like 13, 14 years ago, uh, and was around in it for a long time uh, and it's, it's changed massively along with the sport at all levels you know the world rallycross didn't exist then european rallycross has gone on leaps and bounds and the british championship is right there with it i think it's definitely one of the strongest national championships there is now uh, in rallycross but it's also one of the strongest motorsports in the uk now in national motorsports so uh the, the performance has definitely improved uh, i had a bit of a shock today because i probably because i haven't been in the jacket for five years but i wasn't expecting to have to go as fast as i as i was and i was still not anywhere near the front so yeah, it's gone faster, the cars are better, the drivers are better, and there's a lot, main things, a lot more people here racing. The spectacle's better, uh, the events are, you know, I think more of a show. So it's great, it's great to see the sport grow and to come back to a national event and see how much better it's got since I was last that one. Dan Rook, British champion, trophy in hand. How do you feel, what does it mean winning this championship? Uh, words can't describe it, I don't think. 
Uh, just absolutely amazing. It's so great to be able to, to bring the championship back for the whole team. We've, uh, we've all worked so, so hard this year to, uh, to be able to keep the car going and to get the results and push as hard as we can. And it's just fantastic to be able to lift the trophy and celebrate with all of the team here at Croft. Ollie, it was worth the wait because we had two red flags and then a long break before the race actually ran. But am I right in saying that did you a favour? At one point, it looked like you couldn't take part in a restart. Yeah, it was, um, didn't actually do me a favour. The red flag, I wasn't a, a cause of the red flag or involved in the red flag. It actually happened behind me. And uh, as a result, I'd done another lap, and then we had a, we obviously hit something at some of the debris, and that broke my steering. So I was really unlucky, because we made a good start, made a good lead, I was very happy with that. And I think Bardi was behind me, which was a 1-2 for the team, but uh, the stoppage was a big disappointment. But the rerun gave you that repair time, and then at the end of the day, you managed to hold them all off and take the race win, and that was some drive. Uh, yeah, we're a bit lucky there as well. The, the, we actually failed on the repair. Uh, we have a steering rack problem. We, we changed the steering pump, didn't have thought the problem. So I got penalised five places on the grid for coming off the circuit to do the repair, which was a knee jerk decision, I think, but it happened. And uh, I think it was just a, the rage in the car made me make a good start, and it worked. But uh, it was very difficult to drive. We, we drove the last race without the power steering. It was quite difficult. So, how are your muscles feeling? Very tired, very <laughs> sore. <laughs> very, very sore. But hey, yo, hey, yo. Once you pass that finish line in front, all the pain goes away. <laughs> so, the first time we've seen this car in the British Championship, and it's done you proud today. Yeah, it has done, actually. It's been a very good car, this. Um, we've used it in the European Championship, and in the beginning of the year, with a lot of development issues. But once we got into the Championship, it was very good. A bit like the British Championship, with issues in the beginning, the second half of the year has been the better, you know? There you go, that's where it happens. And is this the car that you're going to use next year? Yeah, this is the car. We're probably going to do European Championship again next year with this and some selected British rounds. Um, to do both championships is very difficult with one car. I've been fortunate we haven't sold to Focus yet, but uh, I think we may have a customer in the, in the back line. If that happens, I think the British championship will just be select rounds next year. But um, you never know what happens, you know, it's a long winter.